this is probably, and it always is every year, this is probably the best and the most reliable astronomical event we get every year. It's the Persid Meteor Shower. And this really can be quite spectacular. Now, it does depend on, of course, the weather. That's the most important factor. If we get cloudy skies, you're not going to see anything. But if we do get a clear night, um, unfortunately, this year, it's just after the full moon. And the full moon this year is on the 14th, so literally a few days after the, the shower peaks, which is normally around the evening of the 12th stroke morning of the 13th. But even the full moon will not drown out the brighter meteors. And this shower is one of... There's probably two showers a year that are quite spectacular. The Persids in August and the Geminids in December. And unfortunately, they're both the same rough distance apart, so the full moon will affect both, or neither, as the case may be. So this year, the full moon's going to affect both of them. Does that mean make it l less bright? Uh, yes, well, we want, no, the full moon makes the, me the faint meteors invisible because of bright, bright moonlight. Obviously, we astronomers, we love we love looking at the moon. Of course we do. It's a special object. But the best time to do stargazing is, of course, when there's no moon in the sky. So the week each side of the new moon is the best time to do stargazing. But unfortunately, this year, it's the other way around. Full moon on the 14th, that means it'll be just past quarter moon or well on its way past quarter moon. It'll be about three quarters or gibbous moon. Um, so it will drown out the faint meteors. But the Persids are so good that even if the moon is as bright as it will be, um, you're still going to see some meteors. We can... And how do they appear to an untrained eye? Is well, this what a layman would think of as a shooting star? Exactly. Okay. Meteors and shooting stars are exactly the same thing. They are stars that appear to move very quickly across the sky, hence the expression shooting stars. But of course, they're not stars. Stars are infinitely further away. The, the, the meteors are particles of dust or small stones entering the Earth's atmosphere and literally burning up and leaving a streak of light as they do. And the Persids, every year we pass through this part of a meteor shower called Comet Swift Tuttle. The remnants of has been, well, the, the comet is still visible, um, but the remnants or the, the debris from that comet has been spread out right around its orbit. And as the Earth intercepts the orbit of this comet, we get this meteor shower. Regular clockwork every year. Some years it can be really spectacular. A couple of years ago, beautiful evening in the Isle of Man, no moonlight to interfere. I think it was September, uh, August um, 2015. And it was really was spectacular. I saw about 60 or 70 in less than an hour. And that really is special. I mean, you sit there and you see none. And all of a sudden, bang, 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 you'll see two or three. And you don't need to know where you're looking. Uh, you don't need to stare at a particular point in space to see them. All meters come from a single point in the sky called the radiant. And the radiant of this shower is within the constellation of Perseus. They're nothing to do with the stars of the constellation of Perseus. But they always appear from this part of the sky. And as a result, they can go below the radiant point, above the radiant point, to the left or to the right. So just stare at the uh, northeastern part of the sky. Your best time is around midnight. And I'll almost guarantee it. I've never failed yet. I've always said if the sky is clear and you look for half an hour, I guarantee you'll see at least two or three and possibly a lot more. And is the scale of it totally unpredictable then? It, there could be many or No, not it's, so many? it's predictable to the point that the shower and the Geminids are both predicted to give us what we call, it's an astronomical term called the zenith hourly rate or the ZHR or ZHR as the Americans would say. And that assumes the radiant point is directly overhead at the zenith. So you'll see them coming from directly overhead in all directions. Well, the radiant point isn't overhead. It's on the northeastern horizon. So we're only going to see them really coming up from the horizon or maybe a few that we might catch going below the radiant point. So we get to see 30 or 40 minimum. But on a good year, who knows, you could get 60 or even to 100.